Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button down below. Today we are talking about the new Tom Ford Soleil Nash collection. So this is the holiday collection for 2022. There are three items in this collection. They are all limited edition. And right now they are available at a variety of retailers. So I will have all of that information down below in the description box. Let's start off with some swatches. We have two eyeshadow palettes. You can see that these are the traditional size and shape for the Tom Ford palettes. However, like all the Soleil palettes, we have white. This time we have silver down here. And all of the newer palettes have the big TF logo on there. So if you are looking at, for example, the shade and illuminate highlighters or the blushes or any of the newer products, you're gonna see a large TF on the logo. It's one way to distinguish newer products from older stock. And this is palette number one, Apres Ski. And both palettes are going to be in the wet, dry formula. And I do have demos to show you what they look like, both wet and dry. So this here is Apres Ski. And we are going to swatch these wet as well. Here's the first two. We're just gonna put them right here so you can really see how much more vibrant they are. All right, so wet versus dry for Apres Ski. This is the second palette. Again, it's a wet dry formula, but really these feel more like toppers. They are going to be much more lighter in pigmentation and they have a little bit more of a metallic gritty kind of texture. You can see that these are fairly light. Let's try those wet. So you can see that they're definitely gonna be more pigmented wet. They're gonna give you more of that metallic look, but you know, these are still going to be on the lighter side. Even wet, you're gonna see more of that metallic sheen, that metallic finish. You're gonna see a lot more sparkle and shine, but the actual pigmentation level is not that drastically different. There is a third item that is a new lip blush. Now, I have to say, this is my first time trying a lip blush. If you are familiar with the lip blush, the previous version was gold, and when you open it up, you have this clear gel-like balm with gold flakes inside, and I believe they used, I think it was like 24 karat gold. This one has silver. So these balms do change color with the pH level on your skin, so that's one sheer layer. You can see it's starting to change. This one here, I'm just gonna build this up next to it, this one here actually turns to a vibrant yet soft pink. So it's a pretty, it's, it's like a fuchsia kind of shade, but it's gonna be softer in pigmentation. You can see more of a color change on my lips. And as a matter of fact, what I have on my lips right now is the Sisley Lip Pencil in Nude, which is brown. It's kind of this warm brown and I have it topped with the lip blush. So it does kind of cool it off. So I've got a demo of the lip blush on its own as well as on top of a couple of different lipstick shades so you can see how it will alter them as well. But as time progresses, you can see this is definitely turning more pink. Now, although I don't have the gold lip blush, the original lip blush is also going to turn kind of this pink color on your lips, but it's going to be a little bit lighter in coloration and it's a little bit peachier. So uh, this is going to be cooler in tone, just a little bit. It's a little bit of a brighter pink than the gold lip blush. Let's talk a bit about these while we go through the demos. Let's start off with the lip blush. So uh, as I mentioned, the lip blush is kind of this firm gel-like balm. It has an interesting texture. It's really smooth. It doesn't feel like your traditional lip balm that has kind of those creamy emollient textures. This really feels more like a firm gel. So if you take like a, like a gel gloss and you were to harden it into a mold, almost like firm jello. <laughs> so that's kind of the texture. You can feel just even applying it on your lips that it has a little bit of this like bouncy texture. It's not totally hard. 
and I, I find it to be really interesting, comfortable on the lips. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of pH changing lip products, but I did want to try this just because I've never tried one of these to say, you know, if this is a product that you like, I do find it comfortable on the lips. I have not obviously gotten to any of the actual like silver particles that are embedded in there. So I'm not sure how that's going to feel when I reach those, but I think it's an interesting product. And I do have uh, a couple of comparisons. We're going to take a look at the Givenchy peach changing products as well. So just a quick comparison before moving on to the eyeshadows. This is the Givenchy liquid lip balm in 001. It is a pH indicated product. And I, there's also a, um, let's put that right there. There is also a more solid balm, you know, in the Stilos. I thought I had that, but I don't see it. So I guess I didn't pick that one up. But this here is the liquid lip balm and they're gonna be fairly similar. You can see that the pink for the Givenchy is a slightly warmer pink. It's a little bit more natural looking on the lips. So between the two shades, personally, I prefer the Givenchy shade. And this one is gonna be a little bit more similar to the gold lip blush over the silver. So as you are looking at these demos, you can see the lip blush on its own and the longer it sits on your lips, the brighter pink it will get. So it does get to be a pretty, you know, a soft fuchsia shade on the lips. And when you put it on top of one of the other lipsticks, at first it looks like it doesn't do too much, but again, after a few minutes, it is going to give you more of that pink vibe, which is a really great thing if you wanna cool down a lipstick, if you've got a shade that's a little bit too warm for you, or you know you want something a little bit pinker to freshen up a lipstick, that would be a great purpose for this particular product, in my opinion. Now, as I mentioned today, I'm wearing the Sisley Lip Liner in Nude topped with the lip blush and I really like the color combination. The Sisley Lip Liner in Nude is just a little bit too warm for me to wear on its own, but paired with this lip blush, I like the combination. I think it's a great, more everyday nude. This one in particular still leans a little bit warm, but it is much more, it's much closer to neutral than it would be on its own. So I really like the combination. Let's move on to the eyeshadows and we're gonna start off with number one, Apres Ski. So this is a warm tone palette. This is your traditional Tom Ford wet dry formula and as I'm showing you these demos, you can see on the right eye, I'm using the shadows wet or dry rather. And then on the left, I am using them wet and I'm using them in the same way so that you can see, you know, exactly what the difference in uh, the uh, colors are on the lid. And I have to say, I really like this palette. The formula is great. You know, I think it performs really well. The colors are nice. They are not my personal favorite shades. They are a little bit warm. These do, they're all pretty uh, like rusty orange, which I think is really in. Now, one thing to note, the lightest shade in here is kind of this like soft tan beige shade. And for me, having lighter skin, I would actually like to use, if I were to use this for an inner corner highlight, it doesn't really perform that way for me. So for me, I would have to use like a separate highlighter or something, which I did do in the final look here. And I have to say though, I really like how all of these perform. I like the sheen that these have. These are not gonna be overly frosty, but there is gonna be a little bit of that frosty appearance that you see with a lot of the wet dry shadows. It's really just a very strong satin with a sheen. So there's not really a ton of glitter. You'll see like a, a few little glitter pieces mixed in there, but really it's more of a high satin sheen finish that you have on these. And I think they're great. So looking at the colors, we have kind of this warm tan beige shade followed by kind of a soft, more of a, I would say it's like a soft terracotta orange followed by more of a soft terracotta red. This one definitely has more red in it. It's almost like a burnt red orange pumpkin. 
and then we have a warm rich brown and I think the colors all go very well together and I have to say this is my favorite palette of these two moving on to number two chalet lust this is the palette i was most drawn to in the promo photos i was so excited to get this i love these lighter palettes provided they are giving you pigmentation and color and i have to say the problem with this palette is that although it is wet dry you definitely see a difference using wet versus dry these shadows are just going to be they're a little bit more gritty they're not as smooth or finely milled and i think it's because they have a lot of glitter in them these are definitely more topper like shades they're very sparkly you know you're going to end up with glitter on your face after using these you can see them in the demo so again i did the exact same thing with this shadow my right eye is dry the left eye is wet so you can see the difference they're going to give you more of this metallic foiled appearance when using them wet but it's still going to be pretty light in pigmentation now using them wet or dry even you know depending on how you build that up you can get a really nice sheen i have to say using these dry you could use these as a sparkly highlighter on the cheek that works for these shades as well they are definitely light enough to be used on the face as highlights and you know honestly if you want to get something impactful even for like inner corner and so forth you're probably going to want to use them wet this shot this palette itself is probably going to be best wet now on my lighter skin tone these don't show up super well but I bet on a deeper skin tone, if you're looking for something, you know, light and bright, kind of that like silvery metallic appearance, that's, this palette could show up very well for that. However, again, even dry on these, I feel like they're just not going to be great dry, uh, regardless of the skin tone. That's primarily because of the texture, how much glitter and fallout there are going to be. But if you like this wet foiled look, I think that's going to be stunning on deeper skin tones where it's, there's a lot of contrast and it's very vibrant. And I could see, you know, some sort of like New Year's Eve type of look with that. So I think, you know, this palette will be nice on the right person. I just don't think it's great for me. And, uh, you know, looking at these shades, the first shade is kind of a, like, um, it's like a peachy ivory. There's a little bit of peach in there, keeping it a little bit warm. So it's almost a champagne, but not quite there. It's really more of a soft ivory with the faintest hint of peach, followed by a soft gold. Then we have this more champagne shade. It's kind of like a nude lilac champagne. So think of like a nude champagne and then just the faintest touch of lilac in there or lavender just kind of mixed in there so you don't really see too much purple but it cools it off just a touch and then the last shade is going to be this soft kind of this tan brown it is going to have some gold in there though so if you're thinking about the apre ski that that first shade there that tan beige it's going to be a more golden lighter version of that so there's definitely some yellow in there and again all of these shades are sparkly and i feel like it for this palette they would have done a better job having like maybe one or even two shades like that and then having at least two of the shades being you know a little bit more opaque more your traditional wet dry formula like those in the apre ski i have no issue with the actual color story if it had performed the way they look in the pan but they just come off too light too glittery in my opinion so um you know this palette could be good if you have a specific use for it you know as toppers and so forth but i think for the majority of people this is just not going to be a winner and you can see here in this palette just from using it the few times i've used it so far just how much dust there is here sitting in the tray compared to the apre ski which has very little so it's just a much dustier palette in general so i would not recommend the um chalet lust palette let's do a few comparisons for shades 
All right, so here is the new Abre Ski. This is one of the older Soleil Neige quads. This was number three Soleil Diver that came out a couple years ago. And you can see that they are kind of similar in color stories. So we're going to swatch these directly under Abre Ski. All right, so, all right, so let's just put these right here. So here is Soleil Diver. I'm going to swatch these on my other arm one to one. All right, so first we've got Apres Ski followed by Soleil Diver. Apres Ski, Soleil Diver. All right, so we've got Apres Ski followed by Soleil Diver for each pair here. So you can see that they are going to be similar in color story. They are not dupes, but a lot of people miss out on Soleil Diver when that came out. It was one that was really hard to get. So if you missed out on that and that, that's one that's been calling your name, Apres Ski is a good alternative to that. This is the new Bobbi Brown Luxe Eye and Cheek Palette this gorgeous packaging. We're just going to swatch these three shades here. So this is going to be Petal Plush, Honey Light, and Melting Point. So these are not going to be the same. I'm just gonna put these right up here at the top, but I just wanted to kind of share the color story here. This shade here, Melting Point, it does have a similar vibe. These are gonna be a little bit more red, more coppery. They're brighter, vibrant colors, but they do kind of give me a, a similar frame of reference. Moving on to Chalet Lust, we're gonna take a look at the Chanel Mediterranean Quad. And I have to say, you know, I, I would pick the Chanel over <laughs> the uh, Tom Ford here, but if you look at the color story, we do have a similar color story here. Obviously we have a much more vibrant, deeper shade here, but look at these. These are gonna be light and shimmery, similar, but the Chanel's gonna be more pigmented. I do think though that the color story is fairly similar. I also had a request to swatch 539 from Dior Grand Ball, and we're gonna take a look at this. We're gonna skip the deepest shade in the center. It's nowhere, you know, that's obviously not in Chalet Lust. So let's take a look and you know what? We're gonna put the, well, we'll just put these right here. So again, color story. This here is Tom Ford Chalet Lust. It's going to be lighter in pigmentation than the Dior. And the Dior actually has some different tones in here. These are gonna be really more golden ivory kind of shades for the most part. The most unique is this one that has a little bit of lavender. Whereas here with Grand Ball, we have kind of this like rosy shade here. This is gonna be more toppery, very similar to, it's actually kind of similar to this without the lavender. But you can see that these are gonna be much deeper, more, you know, just more pigmented. And this has more peach. This is gonna be more of your golden brown, very similar to this shade, just deeper. So those are gonna be it for my comparisons today. I did wanna show you the lip blush and how much it has turned. So this was the sh one layer. This was several layers of the lip blush. This is the Givenchy. So you can see that they are all going to turn kind of bright over time. And you can see though that the uh, Tom Ford just has more of a cooler tone to it than the Givenchy, which definitely ends up being more pigmented. Again, that one though is in the gloss form. There is a lip balm form that is gonna be a little bit softer in pigmentation. I had it at one point, so I'm not sure what happened to that. But overall, uh, those are going to be all of the comparisons. I had some requests for the Tom Ford Suspicion Quad. I do not have that one, so I can't swatch that. So in summation, my thoughts on this collection are it's a little bit disappointing. I like the Apres Ski. That's definitely the best product in this collection. I think the quality is great. The color story, you know, is a great color story, very similar to Soleil Diver. 
honestly, if I had to pick between the two, I still like Soleil Diver just a little bit more. I think that one's just a little bit more wearable for me, whereas this one's gonna be a little bit, uh, you know, just more of those like orangier tones. So I think it's a really great palette though. I do like that one. Chalet Lust, I find to be kind of a bust. I was really hoping for good things from that one, but I don't really like that one. So I would hesitate to recommend that unless you have a specific purpose for that in mind. And these characteristics of that quad will help you meet that purpose. And as for the lip blush, I think if you like those products, this is a nice version of it. Um, I think it's an okay product. So for me, myself, I probably won't purchase any more of these, but I think it is a nice product and it's really cool to look at. So it's definitely like something you pull out of your purse and people are like, wow, what's that? You know, so it depends what you're going for there. But uh, overall, it was an okay collection, but a little bit disappointing because I was very excited for this one. So I hope this was helpful and please let me know what you think. Let me know if you purchased any of these items and I can't wait to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. So have a wonderful day.